The woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window was pretty funny. It was also a thriller with a major twist, or at least that's what it was at face value, but in truth, most of it was a lie. And I'm not just talking about the obvious hallucinations and dreams she had, such as Neil coming over. I'm saying that the handyman does not live in her attic. He never did, and he's not even real in the current timeline. And it was never arrested because the entire whodunit subplot was in her head. Lisa was never killed by anyone. Last but not least, Anna didn't get back together with her ex-husband, and they don't have a child. Anna imagined it all, and there's proof. In the very first scene of the show, Anna had 12 visions, but I can prove my point with just six of them. She had a vision of Rex kidnapping her. She had a vision of herself bloody at Douglas's wedding. She had a vision of herself stabbing Lisa. She had a vision of herself dropping a knife next to her boots after seeing the blood in the attic. She had a vision of herself screaming in the window as Buell walked across the street with a hammer in his hand. And she also had a vision of herself crawling across the street to Neil's house to stop Buell from killing someone. In other words, in the very first scene of the show, 12 visions flashed through Anna's head. These visions all took place in the future, so either Anna is clairvoyant, or none of those future scenes were real. She simply imagined them very quickly in the first scene, and then she imagined them in more detail in the future. Jesus, Anna, when are you not hallucinating? So, it begs the question, how much of this story was real? The answer, not much. Let's start by analyzing Anna's handyman, Buell. Supposedly, Buell has been fixing her mailbox for three years. Obviously, that does not make sense. Buell was outside fixing the mailbox the first time that Anna tried to bring casserole over to Neil. But when it began to rain, he walked away with the mailbox door. Then, she fell and the casserole bowl shattered. But Buell was nowhere to be found. Why? because he wasn't there in the first place. Anna got freaked out by a bird in her attic, so she took some drugs and drank. She then fell asleep and dreamed about her neighbor, Neil. The next morning, she went over there, and guess who was outside working on the mailbox again? Her imaginary handyman, Buell. When she walked over with another bowl of casserole, the first one was still laying there, another clue that these scenes aren't even real. At the end of the show, Anna found out that Buell had been living in her attic for the last three years, which is obviously ludicrous. Nevertheless, she thought that she saw him walking over to Neil's with a hammer. So she ran over there to stop him and found him on the ground. She was told that he survived, but here's the thing. Buell didn't walk over to Neil's house. Emma didn't stab him or shoot him. And Douglas didn't actually tell her that Buell survived because none of those scenes actually happened in real life. Again, Buell is just a figment of her imagination. <gasps> Buell! Your hand! Well, I'll be. There's a nail in my hand. This will be more evident if we look deeper into other characters. Let's take a look at her ex-husband, Douglas. Anna and Douglas got married. They had a child, but she died. When Douglas left Anna three years ago, Anna had not moved on, and Douglas had not uploaded a picture to Instagram for three years, so Anna had assumed that he had not yet moved on either. Anna's neighbor, Carol, set up a double date, but Anna lost track of time in a tubby. She then looked at her phone and noticed that for the first time in three years, her ex-husband had uploaded a photo of him and another woman. Anna then imagined him and her getting married, and during their wedding, she ran up to them and killed a woman. But here's the thing. In the very first scene, she had a vision of this fake wedding vision. How could she have had a vision of killing a woman before she even knew that woman existed? Because it was all fake. It was all a story that she was telling herself while doing meds and drinking. Speaking of meds, check this out. At the end of the story, it was quote-unquote revealed that her ex-husband Douglas was her shrink, but that was just another lie. At the beginning of the story, she was on the phone with her shrink. She had him saved in her phone as therapist. That was the first clue that it was not her ex, it was a different man, her therapist. During the phone call, she described her ex-husband to the therapist, so clue number two, that the therapist was not her ex. The third clue relates to the medication. At the end of the season, Douglas said that he had her on a 50 gram dose of a class 4 psychotropic. Think about that. A 50 gram dose. Prescription drugs are not given out by the gram. They are given out by the milligram, which is a thousandth of a gram. So basically, none of this actually happened. Douglas was not her shrink. They did not get back together at the end of the story. And they did not go on to have another child. It's all in her head. Let's actually take a step back and look at her neighbor, Emma. Supposedly, Emma was jealous that her mother was having a second child, so she booby-trapped the dock since her mother could not swim. 
Her mother walked out and almost fell into the water. Then, Emma Hulk stomped the dock to finish the job. Obviously, that's ridiculous. It didn't happen. But let's keep going. Emma did not push her teacher off of the lighthouse. She did not kill her father's girlfriend, Lisa. She did not text her father from his girlfriend's phone so as to leave a false trail. She's just a nine-year-old kid who lost her mother. Nothing more. So Emma did not go to the police station and write a threat on Anna's rear window. She did not sneak into Anna's house and grab one of Anna's scalpels so as to frame her for the murder. Because the murder didn't even happen. No one killed Neil's girlfriend, Lisa. She's still alive. She is a flight attendant who wears a red scarf, and Anna mistook that scarf for blood. The entire subplot of Anna getting arrested by the cops was fake, and the entire plot about Anna crawling across the street to stop a murder was fake. Emma did not try to kill Buell because, as we already went over, Buell is just a figment of Anna's imagination. Emma did not kill her father since he was a bad ventriloquist. That's just silly. She did not try to kill Anna, and she was not killed by Anna. None of that happened. Anna does meds, she drinks, and she dreams. That's it. But that's not to say that everything was fake. So what really happened? Anna and Douglas Whitaker got married, and they had a child named Elizabeth. Hi, you've reached the Whitaker residence. Unfortunately, Anna's daughter died. Over the course of the season, Anna mourned her daughter several times at the cemetery, but every time, the words on her daughter's grave were different. So those scenes were unreliable at best. <laughs> Babe? Build a time, time machine, machine so we can, can go, go back in time and change things. We don't know how Anna's daughter died, but it relates to the raid. Anna, you have good reason to fear the raid. It's linked to the worst day of your life. In my head, Ken, Anna got into a car crash in the raid and her daughter died. But that's pure conjecture. The point is, her daughter died three years ago and Anna is still in denial. Anna made up the story about Masker Mike eating her daughter instead of talking about what really happened. She is in denial, and sometimes she forgets that her daughter is dead. How are you? Good? Yeah? Can you at least give me a kiss before I go? I can't. Why not? Because I'm dead. Anna is on medication, and she drinks a lot of wine. That can contribute to the hallucinations and can even cause a psychotic episode. Eventually, Anna decided to dump out all of her wine. Red or white? Oh, no, thank you. I don't drink wine anymore. I'll have a vodka. But that was a misdirect. So Anna is still drinking while on meds. And she is still having hallucinations. And most importantly, Anna still hasn't spoken about her daughter's death. So she is still in denial and continues to live in fantasies. Anna needs to learn to forgive herself for whatever happened to her daughter. And a piece of her knows this. After all, Buell is just a figment of her imagination. And he told her this. Everybody makes mistakes, Miss Anna. At times, Anna realizes that she needs help. I think, um, I think I need help. But there is a very tragic reason why she won't let herself heal. Because maybe I don't want to get better. Maybe I'm afraid that if I get better, I'll forget about her. Ultimately, Anna has to forgive herself and move on. And she may get there someday, with the help of her friend, or her imaginary friend, Sloane. Elizabeth died that day, but you did not have to die with her. Life is for the living. And so are casseroles. <laughs>